Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about number four from the night. Nope, from the 2000 Calc BC exam. So let's see what it was. Um, a particle has position x of t, y of t at time t. Um, the position of the particle at time t equals 1, so not t equals 0, t equals 1, is 2, 6. And the velocity vector at any time t greater than 0 is given by uh, the quantity 1 minus 1 over t squared, comma, 2 plus 1 over t squared. All right, so the first part, so this is this is a parametric slash vector type problem. Um, first part is to find the acceleration vector. So what we need to do is uh, tie the velocity and acceleration. So we were given the velocity vector. I'm going to rewrite it with negative exponents because I just think it's easier to take derivatives that way. Uh, so we have this. So now what we're supposed to do is say that a of t is the derivative of that. So a of t is v prime of t. And now it's kind of power rule uh, each component. So uh, we're going to bring, so the derivatives of 1 is 0, bring the negative 2 down, we get positive 2, t to the negative third, and then uh, the derivative of 2 is 0, bring the negative 2 down and subtract 1, so we get this. Now we're supposed to do this at t equals 3, so the acceleration a of 3 is going to be 2 over 27 comma negative 2 over 27, and that's part a. Uh, usually these are, are pretty straightforward. So same given information, we want to find the position of the particle at t equals 3. So this actually is, um, it's one of my favorite like applications, I guess, of the fundamental theorem. So we're using the fundamental theorem, and the way we're going to use it is like this. So x of b is equal to x of a plus, so it's like an accumulation function, right? The integral from a to b of x prime of t, and then y of b, we're going to have to do it twice is y of a plus the integral from a to b, so like the displacement of just the y component um, of y prime. So let's see if we can implement that. So we want to find x of 3 and y of 3. And we have to avoid the pitfall of using 0 as the lower bound, which I swear uh, I do all the time. So that's 2 plus. Now we're starting at t equals 1. And then, so we're going 1 to 3. And then the x component, which is 1. Uh, I'm going to say minus t to the negative second, and then dt. This is fundamental theorem, so 2. Uh, antiderivative, so of 1 is t, and then plus 1 times the reciprocal gives us plus t to the negative first. We're going from 1 to 3. And then, uh, so it's 2 plus, if I plug in 3, I get 3 plus 1 third. And if I plug in 1, so it's minus, plug in 1, you get 1 plus 1. So that's... 2 plus 3 minus 2 is 3 plus 1 third, 10 thirds. Okay, that's the x component. Now we have to do it again for the y component. So y of 3 is going to be, uh, you start at 6, and then plus uh, the integral from 1 to 3. So that 1 is a killer. Uh, like a lot of people try to put 0. It's undefined at 0, so then you run into a problem, but like uh, you start there and then waste your time basically. We got to integrate this. Again, I'm going to use negative exponents because I think it's easier to integrate. Uh, and then, so 6 plus 2t minus t to the negative first. That's plus 1 times the reciprocal. And we're going from 1 to 3. So 6 plus quantity. Plug in 3 and you will get uh, 6 minus 1 third minus, plug in 1, you get 2 minus 1, which is just 1. So 6 plus 6 is 12. Uh, minus 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11, 11 minus 1 third is 32 thirds. All right, so now I think we should make a statement about what we solved. So I'm going to say uh, the position at t equals 3 is the ordered pair 10 thirds comma 32 thirds. And there you go. Very straightforward. Uh, a lot of fundamental theorem, though. Let's take a look at the next one. So for what time t greater than zero does the line tangent to the path of the particle uh, have a slope of eight? So this is, you have to demonstrate your knowledge of how dy dx is related to dy dt and dx dt. So dy dx is going to be, uh, it's, you know, the chain rule is one way to think of it, or just memorize it, uh, dy dt divided by dx dt. And then I'm going to replace it with the respective functions. So I get this. And then this is non-calculator, so we gotta we gotta solve this. So I'm gonna get a common denominator in the numerator, which gives me two t squared plus one over t squared. 
And then I'll do the same in the denominator, and you get t squared minus 1 over t squared. Since they're both over t squared, it just cancels. That's dy dx as a function of t. So now the question is, um, for what time t does the slope equal 8? So we're trying to solve dy dx equals 8, which gives us this kind of algebra 2-ish equation, maybe algebra 1, I don't know, I'm going to multiply both sides by t squared minus 1, or cross multiply. And then uh, bring, bring the t squareds to the left and the constants to the right. So we get this, divide, square root. And then um, since t is greater than 0, we are going to get uh, just the positive of radical 3 over 2. All right. And then uh, we have one more question. The particle approaches a line as t approaches infinity. Find the slope of this line. Show the work that leads to your conclusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import my uh, dy dx from the previous part. So I'm going to say from part c, I know dy dx is 2t squared plus 1 over t squared minus 1. The question is just what's the limit of this as t approaches infinity? So we want the limit as t approaches infinity of dy dx, which will be the limit as t approaches infinity of 2t squared plus 1 over t squared minus 1. There are numerous ways to evaluate this limit. I mean, one of them is it's a rational function, uh, same degree in the numerator and denominator, so it's actually just the ratio of the coefficients of the highest power, so 2. Uh, I'm going to choose to divide through by the highest power of t in the denominator, which sort of ironically, as far as the work is concerned, takes us right back to the given uh, values for dy dt and dx dt. But like, there was no way to know that was going to happen as, as the problem went on. Now, if you take the limit as t approaches infinity, 1 over t squared goes to 0. So we just get 2. So that would be the slope of the line. Um, and that's the entire problem. And I hope you found this helpful. And good luck.